ton of damage on, into things like Incineroar or, or Rillaboom and try to push that punch that first hole that makes it a lot harder to support that boosting Pokemon in the middle of it all. And here we go. Both players now will send out their leads, Archalodon and Thunderous over on Yuki's side of the field, while it is Annihilate and Sableye over on Chance's side of the field. So again, this Sableye will be able to set up screens pr promoting longevity here for this uh, for this Annihilate on Chance's side of the field. Yeah, going to be able to set up a light screen to kind of mitigate the damage coming in from our Shower Dawn. You can imagine something like an Electro Shot or a Flash Cannon is coming this turn, um, but the bulk up is not going to help with that. You probably still want it to get start getting the attack boost because you're not going to KO either of these Pokemon too quickly, but a light screen may not be enough damage, especially if it's repeated Electro Shots where our Shower Dawn starts to boost its own uh, special attack in response. Are you going to really mount damage quickly against this Annihilate? And Annihilate does use its turn to use bulk up as Thunderous over on Yuki's side sets up the rain. Light screen is set by that Light Clay Sableye, and here is an Electro Shot from that Archalodon will boost its special attack by one stage here and deal some damage. But again, that Light Screen from that Sableye will be paying off really well, and Sableye does not take 50% damage. Sableye, not the bulkiest Pokemon, but it is kind of a kind of a pesky Pokemon to deal with. Yeah, it's looking like little enough damage that even with another boost probably wouldn't be able to pick up the damage on Sableye. And we may be telegraphing a little bit with where the damage is focused. If, I talked before the match that one of the problems with using Annihilate is that if Amoongus is on the other side, it's a problem. But of course, Sableye has the priority taunt, would be able to shut down Amoongus. But if you can get rid of that taunt, then Amoongus starts to look like a much bigger problem. Also, just maybe the Sableye looks a little bit more vulnerable. And you may be expecting this game to go so long that that first light screen can expire and you'd like to just not have Sableye around by that point. Amoongus will take the field for the Thunders, but the taunt lands right into that Amoongus. So the Amoongus will not be able to provide Rage Powder or support and this Annihilate content to just continue to go for bulk ups, boosting its attack and defense. Now two stages of increase both. So the Electro Shot again from Archaludon boosts it to two stages of increased special attack now. Uh, it's getting scary right here. This Archaludon will start dealing damage and that light screen won't matter as much if it keeps boosting like this. Yeah, both Pokemon boosting up quickly. Oh, it is enough damage with the extra stage of special attack to just get the KO on the Sable. I think that's a pretty important thing. Uh, Sable does manage to land one taunt on Amoongus almost by accident as Amoongus comes in for what was the Thunderous, but that'll be the only taunt that happens in this game, which means that Thunderous and Amoongus are gonna have a little bit more uncontested presence on the field. Um, but now this Annihilate is a couple times boosted. Amoongus is taunted, can't try to Rage Powder or support the Archalodon in this moment, and so, uh, starts to look like a big attack and our shallow could be threatening. We've also seen that Annihilate is faster than the Archalodon. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily something we could have taken for granted, um, but it looks to be the case, which means that uh, Chance doesn't have to find speed control, but Yuki might need to. He does have options like the Thunder Wave on the Thunderous on the other side. Uh, I think that's the only speed control option really available. And so if he ever wants to be able okay. to get outpace this, that, that would be the way to make it happen. Okay, all right, um, that's some spice. Uh, looks like, um, uh, <laughs> Chance is turning down his own Annihilate with the Grassy Glide here. Uh, Archalodon will terrestrialize, will turn into that Grass type right now. Uh, wants to shake off that weakness to a potential Drain Punch from the Annihilate over on Chance's side, but, uh, Chance really using this option right here to give boost to this Annihilate for its Rage Fist ability, for its Rage Fist attack, and here it is yet another bulk up. So now three stages of increased attack and defense. Here's an Electro Shot from Yuki's Archalodon. Again, now this is three stages of increased special attack. Will be targeting down what I believe is going to be this Annihilate to try to get damage down onto it. How much damage will it do at three stages? Nope, it's actually going to land right into the Rillaboom. Yeah, Yuki taking a tactic that you, uh, a lot of players will employ oh. against the Annihilate, which is just refusing to attack it. Mm -hmm. If you have the Amoongus on the field, it's really, you're going to take a lot of boost to start trying to drain punch your way through an Amoongus. And so if you can just refuse to give it a Rage Fist boost and it stays as a 50 base power move, that's a one way to handle it. But Chance has been in this situation before. He's seen players try to do this to him and recognizes he's got to get that to at least 100 base power and one side Grassy Glide will do that. And now with three boosts and a 100 base power Rage Fist, it's starting to look a lot easier to deal with both of these Pokemon. And yes, our Chalodon is boosting itself up quickly. Now has three stages of boost special attack, but still hasn't actually landed any damage onto this Annihilate yet. Yep, as again, another side Grassy oh, Glide. That does hit. a lot of damage with the critical hit. Not what you want to see as 
Annihilate now with 100 base power. Rage Fist will go for it. Hits into that Archalodon, and Archalodon hangs on. Gets a stamina boost. Not going to matter too much unless that Archalodon can continue to heal up from this grassy terrain uh, multiple times. But that grassy terrain is going to expire uh, once. Yeah, it's going to expire because uh, this Rillaboom has been knocked out. So here's a Pollen Puff. Will connect. That is another chance for Yuki's Archalodon to heal. So uh, now that Pollen Puff will heal it back up to a we, lot of HP. We saw how much damage that Rage Fist did last turn. That Pollen Puff is not enough to make Archalodon safe. Uh, it also has an Assault Vest. It can't protect itself. Um, this Taunt expires at perfectly the right moment, though. That's going to give an option to Rage Powder away and attack and let Archalodon continue to go out on the offense. Uh, Comfy's going to look pretty vulnerable to a Flash Cannon. I think one more turn without Taunt would have really put Archalodon in a hole. It either takes a Rage Fist that turn or it switches out and lo loses all of those boosts. But the Taunt shakes off at the right moment. I, I think that side critical hit was impactful as well. And now we're maybe getting to the point where there's so many special attack boosts that the uh, Archalodon would have been able to just KO this Annihilate, but it's going to definitely at least force a side uh, Floral Healing here to get the Annihilate back to full health because it's been damaged a, a decent amount from those side uh, grassy glides. Yeah, so uh, the prior the triaged uh, Floral Healing will be able to heal Annihilate back up to max health, uh, and Grassy Terrain actually heals more. Uh, here it is, the Kofi will use Floral Healing, will heal Annihilate back up to max health. Uh, Amoogus can still opt for the Rage Powder. It will go for the Rage Powder here, but it will be taking a big Rage Fist. 100 base power. Going to connect into that Amoogus. Yeah. 150 base power now. Yeah, I've uh, been a couple times KO. boosted and KOs that Amoongus with just an enormous hit. Meanwhile, this Archalodon continues to boost itself up, um, using every single turn of this Rain Dance to continue to get those boosts, um, and is now out on the offense against another. This is going to be a crucial turn. Is it enough oh, damage? Oh, with the, the critical, critical hit. hit. Wow, that could have been an insanely impactful critical hit. I think there was a safer path to this game for Yuki where he tried to just KO the Comfy because then you can play a 2v1, try to get speed control with the Thunderous. But Comfy could have just protected itself that turn in this game so narrow and close that you can't afford that. But because the critical hit land maybe would have just been enough damage anyway. Right. Uh, that Archelodon had boosted itself up so much. But it gets the critical hit, KOs Annihilate, and Comfy, well, Comfy doesn't really do anything by itself. That's the, you know, one way to lose with these teams that have just one central core to the team is as soon as it goes down, you just have to click that run button. Comfy's not going to do anything on its own. I think that was a really fascinating game to watch as both players just kind of boosted up who felt like these unbeatable Pokemon who never actually fought each other uh, until almost the end yeah, of yeah. the game. They were just busy taking down partners. Uh, Yuki recognizing that he needed to get rid of Sableye to prevent future taunts and screens and because he didn't want to boost the Rage Fist himself and then continuing to play after that and get other KOs and then Chance being forced to go after the Amoongus because of the Rage right. Powder at the critical moment. Yeah, and the uh, strategy there, just uh, being able to go for those Grassy Glides to boost that Rage Fist power. Again, that's such a crucial, uh, you know, whiffed KO there on to that Archalodon slot. You know, the game would have been different, completely different, if that Archalodon got knocked out, right? Like, that Archalodon was where Yuki had invested a lot of a lot of his resources into just staying out on the field and just going for all those boosts. Yeah, absolutely. It, it felt like one, whichever one of those two Pokemon went down first was going to lose their trainer that game. I mean, you know, we never saw, saw uh, like the complete picture of what the game looks like if Archelodon goes down early. There are, I think, not quite as much dependence on it from Yuki's side as there is from, from Chance's side on uh, the Annihilate. Um, but still, would have been devastating either direction. Both players have locked in now. Game two, Chance needs to force a game three if he wants to make it to day two. Yuki looking for his ticket to day two. Ooh, a little change up here over on Chance's side of the field. Yuki can lead with Thunderous and the Archalodon over on Chance's side. It is the Galarian Moltres and the 
Sableye. Well, Yuki sees no problem with the game one game plan. It got him a win, and so Thunderous is out there next to Arch Alodon once again, but Chance changes it up completely. Goes for a different uh, core, this time with the Moltres out to boost it. Pokemon that looks at the surface pretty vulnerable against these two Pokemon, both electric type attackers. And of course, if you try to Trastalize and get away from that weakness, then vulnerable to an eerie impulse on the other side that'll mitigate uh, any nasty plots that Moltres goes for. Um, but for now, it's just the Rain Dance, no Trastalization. Uh, chance probably relying on Light Screen to be enough to keep the Moltres safe. Yeah, so Sableye with the Light Screen. Uh, Moltres, the Galarian Moltres will use Nasty Plot here to boost the special attack by two stages as our Chalodon will go for an Electro Shot, giving it one stage of increased special attack here. And that's gonna be something that everybody will need to keep track of watching at home as well as the players out on the field and us too we know that another electro shot will be able to ko sableye from this range after he gets another special attack boost so sableye is not safe in this moment yeah that looks a lot more clear this time that first electro shot doing a decent amount more damage than the first electro shot did in the last game indicating it was a low roll uh once again nurse on not immediately going on the offense against the boosting pokemon because you don't want to give it extra boosts in this case that would be probably dropping a below 50 percent health and giving it a boost while it's still the fastest pokemon on the field instead so you'd like to get a couple more of oh, these electro shot boosts but even one might be enough to start threatening a KO depending on how these Pokemon are trained. Okay, okay. Uh, Thunderous on Yuki's side will switch out. Uh, Yuki will send out the Urshifu, so more offense over on Yuki's side of the field. Galarian Moltres will Terrastalize become a Poison type here, so uh, not wanting to take Electro Shots, just wanting to be able to stay safe and stick around onto the field as much as possible as Sableye uses Taunt onto the thun Thunder Slot, which is now the Urshifu. Uh, so trying to prevent that Thunderous over on uh, Yuki side of the field to go for Eerie Impulses. And here's another nasty plot from Galarian Moltres. Now that's four stages of increased attack, uh, special attack. Yuki's Archaladon now goes for Electro Shot. Now at two stages of increased special attack, will land into that Galarian Moltres slot, but because of the translation, it's not super effective. Not super effective and wouldn't have even been enough damage even if Glare and Moltres hadn't uh, Trastalized. I like that turn from Chance to commit the Trastalization to keep Moltres a little bit healthier, but also put the Taunt onto Thunderous at the same time so that you're not immediately vulnerable to Prankster boosted moves. Of course, the Thunderous is in the back. It's going to come back in at some point, be able to Thunder Wave this Glare and Moltres and slow it down or uh, go for an eerie impulse but right now it's the urshifu that's the problem it's gonna be the fastest thing on the field it's going to be boosted by rain dance you can't put up a reflect to try to stop that because it, they're going to be critical hitting uh the surging strikes uh and so it's threatening a lot of damage i moltres might be able to hang on for it but if it doesn't if this is another situation where chance has this vulnerable uh boosted pokemon mm -hmm. and has to give up those boosts but for now yuki doesn't want to go for the surging strikes doesn't think it's enough to ko doesn't want to risk urshifu which can always come back in and play that role in the future but just sends it into the back and has the uh amoongus come out to take that will list that would have mitigated a lot of that surging strikes damage yeah so amoongus now takes the field gets burned not gonna care too much about that not as much as that urshifu will and here's a fire wrath does big spread damage right there uh, does activate the stamina. Uh, did get a critical hit there as Amoongus will eat away at its Citrus Berry and heal back up. Uh, does have a 20% chance to flinch targets here, but no, no flinches over on that Archalodon. Archalodon uses Electro Shot yet again. Now it is currently at three stages of increased special attack. It will hit into this Galarian Moltres. Galarian Moltres should be able to hang on, but so much damage has been dealt. Dealt. Here's a Berserk boost, so now Galarian Moltres is at five stages increased special attack. You really want that Comfy out on the field right now. Well, I actually think that Berserk boost is really important because you can see Archilodon, uh took that first Fire Rate Wrath mm -hmm. for just under half health. By the way, really impressive from both the defense of the Archilodon and how little offensive training is probably on this Galarian Moltres that a plus four Fire Rate Wrath <laughs> did less than 50% of this Archilodon. But that extra Berserk boost probably means that's enough damage to pick up the KO on Archilodon. Galarian Moltres is the first thing moving. Amoongus can't do anything to stop this. It's a spread move. That's just two KOs being threatened. And you don't want to bring your Thunderous or your Urshifu into a plus five special attack Fiery Wrath. Archilodon can't protect itself. It's got an Assault Vest on. There's really nothing that's going to be able to save this. And meanwhile, Sableye has done its job. It's got 
the screen up. It, it doesn't need to do anything on this turn because two KOs are being threatened. And so it is free for the Comfy to come back in and be able to threaten on the next turn that side floral healing uh, to get Larian Moltres back high in health. It is going to be the Urshifu trying to come in and take this Fire Wrath. We're going to have to see how much it does. Fire Wrath connects onto both targets over there. Our Shalana hangs on with oh, just a sliver of health. Enough. Not enough. And another stamina boost to boot. And here is an Electro Shot connects into that Galarian Moltres and will be able to secure the KO. So, wow, that is an unfortunate whiff of a KO on Chance's side. We saw it get another boost, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, I mean, the fifth boost, every boost contributes less to the damage than the boost prior to that fifth boost. It doesn't contribute that much, much extra damage, but also must have been a damage roll for that first fire graph to come so close to doing 50%. Mm -hmm. And then, then after a boost for it to not be able to pick it up, uh, yeah, uh, the game really just falls apart, Chance, in that moment. As soon as Moltres goes down, it looks very difficult for him to fight this back. Not going to give it up in this situation. Still has three Pokemon, has Rillaboom at full health, and a couple of very chip low Pokemon around. The Amoongus, uh, after eating a Citrus Bear and getting a Regenerator, is going to be looking a little bit healthier. But with these Pokemon on the field are very low and maybe in Grassy Glide KO range. Humphy also has priority with its Draining Kiss that can try to pick up the KO on maybe either of these Pokemon. Um, Rillaboom also has access to Fake Out, so uh, could go for a Fake Out and Draining Kiss option here. Uh, you have to watch out. Uh, fake Out probably won't be able to get the KO on that Archelodon because of its stamina boost, but I think the Draining Kiss, it might be in range for the KO there. So, uh, you know, Chance trying to fight back here has options, but it's, it's, it's an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle, but the low health bars on Yuki's side are a, a sign of hope, a sign of life. I think it's going, the, the Thunderous probably also doesn't have much damage output in this position, but I think the Amoongus made the thing that's very difficult to deal with. Neither of these Pokemon are going to have a lot of damage output against it. And it also uh, has the Sludge Bomb to go on the offensive itself, even if Amoongus has to try to get this job done. It's a double switch over on Yuki's side of the field. Thunderous and Amoongus will take the field. And again, that Regenerator ability is so important to just be able to heal back after you switch out. Uh, Draining Kiss doesn't do anything at all. And here's a Grassy Glide that connects into that Thunder slot. Not very effective as the rain stops here. So this is really good positioning right here for Yuki. I mean, this Amoongus is also comfortable to just kind of Rage Powder away anything. You do have to watch out for the high horsepower from the Rillaboom, but that's all you really have to watch out for. Yeah, Amoongus uh, and Thunderous both just very defensively strong against these two Pokemon. Uh, Rillaboom can try, like you say, to go on the offensive with high horsepower, but it's going to be slow going. The uh, damage is there if you can get to those Pokemon in the back, but you also have to be keeping in mind that you really do need these priority options. If one of them goes down and then the Urshifu comes out, or the Archalodon, and you don't have those priority options to just quickly take care of them, then again, they look like potent Pokemon where they weren't a second ago. Thunders will use Thunder Wave, uh, slows down Rillaboom, and also gets the chance for Paralysis. Uh, Rillaboom high horsepower is into the Amoongus slot. Uh, does do some pretty good damage. It's close as to whether or not another high horsepower will be able to get the KO as Comfy protects itself from the Sludge Bomb. Comfy protects itself from the Sludge Bomb. That burn also paying some dividends for chance here. It means that the Amoongus is not getting healthier in this grassy terrain instead of instead of just maintaining its same health at the end of each turn. Um, and, and that's pretty important because the Amoongus <laughs> is uh, getting whittled down slowly but surely. Wouldn't be surprised to see Yuki opt for a generator boost. That's actually a pretty important amount of damage given uh, how slow chance is able to contribute damage on to either of these Pokemon. Um, and both things in the back maybe really just don't have that much value because they are so low health and the, because of the priority avail options available in the slide. Um, but also a full paralysis could just shift this game at any moment. Mm -hmm. Amoongus will opt for a regenerator healing he option here. Will switch out. It will be the Archalodon who is heavily damaged here as Comfy will use Draining Kiss and connect onto that Archalodon to get the KO. Uh, most likely doubling up into that slot to put to opt for, you know, maybe the high horsepower doesn't necessarily get the KO. Thunderbolt from Thunders will land into the Comfy uh, for some pretty decent damage as the high horsepower connects into the Thunders, which doesn't do anything because Thunders is flying. Yeah, high horsepower doesn't do anything, but one Pokemon goes down for Yuki and Chance 
Uh, it really doesn't pay much of a cost for it. That Thunderbolt just does so little as Grassy Train continues to heal back the Comfy. But it's the Amoongus that is the problem for Chance to deal with. The Amoongus is going to be the one that's hardest to find the damage to put together. And maybe the Amoongus that actually does the most damage at this point. Um, and so he comes back in with a lot more health than it left the field with. Uh, and the Earth Shifu comes back in at the same time. Yep, Comfy will protect itself, does not want to get KO'd. Uh, from a Sludge Bomb here as looks like it's going to be a wood hammer into that uh, Urshifu slot. We'll get the KO. So now Thunderous and Amoongus are going to be the last two Pokemon for Yuki. Sableye still hiding in the back right there for Chance, but uh, Sableye doesn't really provide much. Could set up another screen possibly as a Pollen Puff from that Amoongus lands into nowhere. Trying to heal, trying to find a turn to really to heal back up that Thunderous or if, uh, you know, Chance invests all of his eggs into the Amoongus basket then would be able to heal up the Thunderous. Yeah, it could have been a really impactful moment. There's not that much time left in this grassy terrain. If Urshifu could have come in and gotten healed, mm -hmm. um, could have then been able to take a Draining Kiss if you can get away from the grassy glide threat, then suddenly Surging Strikes is back available again. It would be a lot of great damage. But yeah, starting to look more and more like, Chance just has the tools he needs, even without that boosting Pokemon in the middle, just has the defensive options he needs to work his way through this team. Um, I, I think the Grassy Train expiring may actually be to Chance's benefit, because then Amoongus will start to go down on its own. The other crucial thing about that Urshifu KO is that now Amoongus will never get another Regenerator boost. It's stuck on the field for yep. the rest of the time. If you can get rid of that 60% of Amoongus health, and this Thunderous continues to do very little damage, then... Oh, oh one, HP. 1 HP! Here's a high horsepower from that Rillaboom does damage in that Amoongus, as Amoongus will go for Spore, though, will be putting that Sableye to sleep, so, uh, you know, hang on with 1 HP, I guess it is asleep now, so it, it's, it, it can't set up the light screen, so if it survived and it wasn't put to sleep, then it can, it cannot set up another light screen. Yeah, uh, the Sableye is going to contribute nothing to this battle, yeah. whether it went down to the Thunderbolt or because it gets spored and eventually KO'd. But the one thing it can contribute is time. And time is in Chance's mm -hmm. favor. The longer this goes with the burn trickling down on Amoongus and, and Yuki struggling to find the damage, uh, the, the more in favor it is. But now those Thunderbolts start to add up. But look how little they do. The Assault Vest on Rillaboom uh, coming in there and really mitigating this damage. Oh, and Rillaboom hangs on as Amoongus will most likely, oh, it's close to see if it will be able to survive another turn of burn. Len, you said that you're a great counter for burn counters. I think that's a KO. That's a KO? Yeah, I don't think that Amoongus can take another turn of burn. Um, uh, of course, I don't think Chance wants to let it sludge bomb again either, and yeah. so may just opt to KO it first anyway, uh, because we saw how little that Thunderbolt does mm -hmm. into real Ooh, Boom. Sableye wakes up, does set up a light screen here, so more turns of boosted special defense here as that Thunderbolt does absolutely nothing. Here's a wood hammer that connects into the Amoongus does get the KO there. Uh, so now it's going to be Thunderous versus Sableye. Rillaboom and Comfy in the back. Comfy, if it can take the field, can heal back this Rillaboom. So not over yet. Yeah, Chance there are a tools. lot of great options for Chance now. If he wants to reset Grassy Terrain, Thunderous would not be getting it because it's a flying type mm -hmm. and his Pokemon would be. He can get Comfy out and start healing his Pokemon that way. He can put a Will-O-Wisp down onto the Thunderous and start accumulating damage that way. It just looks like a lot more work than is possible for Thunderous to deal with these three Pokemon and the defensive and sustain options that they provide. Comfy will take the field here as Sableye goes for the taunt into that Thunderous. Does not want to allow Thunderous to uh, uh, Thunder Wave other Pokemon. Here's the Thunderbolt from that Thunderous. Hits into that Comfy and because the Light Scream does no damage whatsoever. So now an opportunity for Rillaboom to possibly come in to a to <laughs> to a floral healing. There's nothing that can stop this yeah. play now. The Rillaboom will come in. The plus three priority floral healing will go into that slot, and all of that long, hard work Yuki did, repeated Thunderbolt and Sludge Bombs will be wiped away in a moment with the grassy terrain boosted floral healing, nearly full healing, or maybe entirely healing this Rillaboom. Yeah, so here's the floral healing. Triage boosted, healing the Rillaboom for so much HP, right back up to max health as the Comfy continues to take a barrage of Thunderbolts here, will eat away at its Citrus Berry, a well-deserved Citrus Berry for this Comfy after providing so much triage to this Rillaboom. Yeah, this Comfy providing enormous value in this game. 
provided value at one point as a damage threat. Remember earlier on in this game, Yuki had two big attackers on the field. Like felt like he could press so much offense, but it was the grassy glide and the floral healing, yep. or the uh, the draining kiss that diffused that. And the Yuki couldn't actually get any attacks off. He was forced to double switch out into two Pokemon that really had no damage presence. They were just taking hits, but they weren't able to do anything back. And that slow slog of a fight we got into from that point on was always in Chance's favor. Uh, he was just able to sustain better um, than Yuki was able to and, and just slowly accumulate the right damage. The regenerator was the only real source of healing for Yuki. Uh, and after a couple of KOs were spent, there was no more regenerator and Amoongus was slowly getting worn down. I think it was just really well played by Chance to continue to find what the path was in that game. Yeah, what what a fight this was. I mean, this Galarian Moltres was at some point five stages of increased special attack. It didn't get a KO at all. It did not get a KO with five stages of increased special attack. Uh, you know, the Urshifu switching in for that Amoongus to be able to withstand that barrage, as well as that Archaludon being able to hang on from two of those after that Berserk boost. And this is something that, in my mind, that I thought was this Galarian Moltres is the damage dealer of Chance's team. You've just lost your damage dealer and you have to go up against four other Pokemon. How do you do it? I didn't believe. Yeah, he found a way. I think that's what's so impressive. I think a lot of players would kind of see the writing on the wall in that situation. Maybe not click the run button, but not be fighting as hard to keep their hopes alive for day two as Chance was there and finding the way back in. Finding the way to reset this at one and one, one final game to decide who's going to move on to day two. Yeah, so that was an intense battle. I mean, that was that's mentally exhausting. Like, you know, if, if you're going into the mindset of Yuki right now, you had that opportunity to take such strong advantage because like, you know, you got, you knocked out that Galarian Moltres and then all of a sudden your, your team is getting picked apart by this Assault Vest Rillaboom. Yes, Rillaboom is this very strong Pokemon, right? It has offensive options, but you have this Rillaboom going up against this Amoongus. You have this Rillaboom going up against uh, Archaludon, which uh, if it Terrasalized could resist, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, this Rillaboom, Comfy, Sableye lead just picked, picked my team apart. As we get now into game three here, same leads for Yuki, Archaludon, and Thunderous over on Chance's side. It's going to be the same leads as well. It is the Sableye and the Galarian Moltres. Yeah, so right back to it. No Annihilate on the field once again. It is Moltres and no hesitation on the Terrasalization this time. Straight into the Poison type for Galarian Moltres. Um, I wonder if that isn't preemptive. That means it's going to be a little bit easier for Thunderous to try to have an effect on this game without having to straight switch out the way it did game one and two. Yep, Thunderous. Oh, taunt immediately yep. this time. Yeah, taunt immediately this time. Uh, Thunderous will set up Rain Dance again uh, just to set up for that Urshu in the back. Here's a nasty pot from this Galarian Moltres. Uh, this time around, I don't think Chance wants to risk any opportunities for this Electro shot to target down into this Galarian Moltres. Uh, Looks like it will be an Electro Shot. It will target down the Galarian Moltres at plus one stage of special attack. So not opting for the light screen just yet. You do have to watch out though. Uh, another Electro Shot will be able to get the KO. So Sableye forced to use light screen this turn. Yeah, I don't think Sableye is unhappy with that. The light screen needs to go down at some point. Yeah. Now is as good of a time as any. It's going to keep Moltres a little bit healthier. Um, I, I do think Chance has to watch out that the damage doesn't accumulate just too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, the Galarian Moltres went down in that last game because Comfy was one turn too late coming out onto the field to try to heal it. It's not looking like Comfy's going to be any faster to the field this time. I don't think Chance wants to rely on winning the game in the same way he had to last game. Much rather the Moltres have more staying power, but he's forced to go on the offense sooner. That is a plus four Fiery Wrath, that's plus two Fiery Wrath. And so it does a lot less damage to this Archaladon. Yep, it could be plus three here if this Electroshot targets down the Galarian Moltres, which it does. So the Berserk will activate as Moltres will get one more stage of increased special attack here. So now it's at three stages, but at the same time, Galarian Moltres is hurt. And it looks like he's just gonna switch out this Galarian Moltres right here. Doesn't want to stick around 
just gonna sacrifice those three stages of increased special attack to be able to pivot and not have that Galarian Moltres be sacrificed. Well, recognizing that there's no real way to protect him. Right. I mean, he can try to Will-O-Wisp the Urshifu the same way that the play that he made in the previous game, but it might still be enough damage to pick mm -hmm. up the KO onto the Galarian Moltres that's a little bit lower this time uh, and doesn't want to have to give it up that early. Uh, and so Rillaboom is going to come out onto the field sooner. Galarian Moltres can still have a big impact in this game, but it only takes one formal healing to reset yeah. that health bar. <laughs> on Galarian Moltres and undo the work that Yuki has put in. The only problem in the meantime, the burn is great, but the Archelodon is probably going to continue to be boosting itself up. Yeah. So Gla you have... Galarian Moltres, if it comes back out, is not going to be facing a neutral special attack Archelodon, but a very boosted special attack Archelodon. Yeah, so now what does Chance have to try to take down this Archelodon before it can do more damage? As here is yet another Electro Shot. More special attack boost for this Archelodon. Uh, at this point, it, it I don't think it will get the KO. I don't think it will get the one-hit KO on that Sableye. If Sableye does hang on with just a little bit of health here, so uh, our Trilodon, again, those boosts are getting really scary, so Chance now has to figure out a way to deal with this Archalodon. Yeah, I mean, I think there are positive things in that turn for Chance. Gets the burn onto the Urshifu. Um, that means it's going to be doing much less damage for the rest of this game. Um, and... and Keeps the Galarian Moltres safe, but the Archelodon just continuing to get healthier with the Grassy Train down. That first plus two a Fiery Wrath is very quickly getting healed off. And meanwhile, the Archelodon is boosting itself up and looking like it's going to start just cleaning up Chance's team. Yeah, and that Archelodon does have a stamina boost from taking that Fiery Wrath, so uh, it is going to be an uphill battle for Chance yet again here as Urshifu will switch out. It is going to be the Amoongus here, but Sableye just going for the taunt into that slot, so good taunt right there to make sure that that Amoongus cannot Rage Powder away any attacks or even go for some spores here. As here's Rillaboom with a high horsepower, super effective damage, but uh, it gets another stamina boost, and I think it might be out of range from a KO at this point, as our Chalodon contends to just go for another Electro Shot and continue to boost. Yeah, I think that is really solid damage to get, though. Um, make sure that this Grassy Train doesn't just try to get uh, Archelodon back to full health. Don't worry about a Pollen Puff just landing and undoing it. If you miss the KO next turn and you just bring something like Comfy that doesn't have damage presence of its own out on the field, then Pollen Puff could quickly undo all of that work. And every time you have to try for an attack into Archelodon, you're just boosting its defense and making it harder. Um, so I think this is a really uh, tricky decision for Chance. If you bring in Moltres, you can maybe right now go for the double up Armed Archelodon and actually get a KO. Um, but you may give up something enormous in the process. For instance, Clary and Moltres getting put to sleep. That makes it a lot harder to deal with the Pokemon in the back. Well, so because it got taunted. It got taunted it got on the switch. Yeah. But anyway, it's Comfy. But you have to watch out for the Sludge Bomb. It, the Sludge Bomb could do a lot of damage. The, the Comfy comes in, though. Um, and, and I think this... Uh, right now, Comfy doesn't really have a great drop to play. Comfy wants to be adjacent to mm -hmm. a damaged Pokemon that it can heal or up against something very low that it can try to pick off with uh, the Draining Kiss, but instead just protects itself because it doesn't really have anything better to do on this turn. And does not want to take a Sludge Bomb from that Amoongus. Here's another high horsepower into that Archalodon slot. Again, those stamina boosts are paying off so much as here is an Electro Shot from this Archalodon. It has so many boosts to its special attack already. Uh, just adding on one more, just kind of hitting into that Comfy slot, though. So here is Amoongus. It will be going for a Pollen Puff, and that's going to heal that Archalodon right back up. That Pollen Puff immediately starts to make this game look impossible for Chance. You saw the work he had to put in to just get that damage onto Archalodon in the first place. That was a plus two Fiery Wrath and then two High Horsepowers. The damage isn't even easier the second time. The stamina defense boosts have come in and mitigated what that High Horsepower is. It's never going to be Comfy that gets it done. It's really unclear how it's going to be Galarian Moltres that gets it done when it's already low in health and fighting against an extremely boosted Archalodon. Yep, so Moltres will take the field here, but again, uh, this Foil Healing will connect onto that Galarian Moltres, but even if it heals back up to full health, doesn't get there. But here's a Flash Cannon, does connect onto that Comfy, does get the KO there. So now down to Rillaboom and that Galarian Moltres as the Amoongus will be able to move, will use Pollen Puff here. And again, that Archalodon is now back to full health. So all the work that was spent from Chance to try to weaken this, weaken and whittle away this Archalodon, 
has been completely undone by the grassy terrain and two pollen puffs. Yeah, and Yuki just pulls further and further ahead as Amunga shakes off his taunt and is going to be able to threaten a spore. That KO was really unavoidable for chance on that turn. Uh, the Comfy had protected on the previous turn. Of course, you can't just switch in the Galarian Moltres into that slot and lose it instead. And so Comfy goes down, gets one last crucial floor of healing off to boost Moltres. But we've seen how much damage a plus two Fiery Wrath does. We've seen how much damage a plus four Fiery Wrath does. Neither of those are enough damage. And there's not going to be time to accumulate the plus six couple of Fiery Wraths that you would need to actually deal with this Archalodon. It, it starts to look extremely difficult. Where there's a Fire Wrath, there is a way, though. Amoongus will switch out here. Thunderous will take the field. Fire Wrath does have a flinch chance. So that might be the best option right now. Chance does use Fiery Wrath, hits into the Archalodon, does Archalodon flinch here, as Rillaboom will go for a high horsepower, fishing for a critical hit. That's going to be so important right now to break through all these stamina boosts, but it doesn't. And here's a Dragon Pulse from that Archalodon does connect into the Rillaboom. Rillaboom hangs on again. That light stream and that assault is so important. Yeah, able to keep Rillaboom alive even against uh, such a boost or shell And you hit the nail on the head. You can see where Chance is at in this game. There's no straightforward path back. So instead, you're fishing for Fiery Wrath flinches, and you're fishing for Stomping Tantrum crits to actually put the damage together. With Thunder Wave, that just got rid of any option for a Fiery Wrath crit. You're now slower, you cannot or Fire Wrath flinch. You're slower, you will not be Here's the highest flinching. horsepower, no crit there. You cannot break through that stamina boost, but yeah, that Thunder Wave is so important right here. And here's a Dragon Pulse from that Archaladon does get the KO on that Rillaboom. So now it's this paralyzed Galarian Moltres just versus all the Pokemon on Yuki's side of the field. Yeah, Yuki just very cleanly moving through this game. He took an unsurmountable lead and then knew how to close it out. Focusing damage on Rillaboom so that the less, as few high horsepowers had to come through as possible. Mm -hmm. Using the Thunder Wave to make sure the Fiery Wrath couldn't extend and give an extra opportunity for a, a high horsepower to come through. And now, Glaring Moltres, we've seen how much damage it does. Even if it gets a couple of Fiery Wrath crits, those just aren't going to be enough damage. It can't get flinches. Uh, it's just kind of There's writing on the wall at this point. Critical hit on that Thunders, but again, it is currently at uh, one stage of decreased special attack. Here's another Eerie Impulse. We'll lower it down to three stages of decreased special attack, but again, that Thunders with that Paralysis is so important as the Dragon Pulse connects on a chance of Moltres and gets the KO, and Yuki Zaninovich is going to move on to day two here at the Orlando Regional Championships. Yeah, I think Yuki just played that really well, weathered the storm with his Archalodon, recognized that it would 